Hey, 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 how is everybody doing today? Yep, 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 yep. Denise here, just making sure the tech all works. Giving you a second to get on. Closer. Okay, today we are going to talk about weight loss after 40. Yeah, from an entirely different angle. <laughs> okay, um, hi, 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 hi. I'm glad you're here. Um, if you're catching the live, I'd love a hashtag live. If you are catching the replay, hashtag replay. Let me know where you're from. Give me a wave. Quick disclaimer before we start today. I am not a doctor. I don't play one on the internet. I am a certified hormone specialist. I've been a personal trainer for 19 years. I know a lot of stuff going on. And I'm always open to discussion. Again, my name is Denise Willick-Peterson. I am the leader here in the Menopause Project. I am the creator of the Use Your Cycle Method and the host of the podcast Menno Minis. Uh, like I said, I've been a certified personal trainer for the last 19 years and a hormone specialist for the last seven. I became a hormone specialist because back in my mid 30s, you know, menopause was like not even a blip on my on my radar, right? And one night, um, my husband and I were getting ready for bed and we were laughing, we were having a great time and all of a sudden I went from laughing hysterically to crying, like super, super ugly crying all over the place, no reason at all. And my husband was just like, what's going on? What's going on? Um, the next morning I, I kind of filtered through the feelings, was trying to figure out what it was. And all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, I think this is menopause. Okay, I know better now. But it was a whole lot of hormonal disruption that starts that 10 to 15 years before menopause called perimenopause. So I did a lot of research. This led to becoming certified. Um, and really my passion is why aren't people talking about this? You know, with a few lifestyle tweaks, a few nutrition tweaks, we can really feel very, very vibrant as we pass through perimenopause and menopause. And it's my passion to help as many women as possible know that menopause is just, it's just a phase. It's, it's just a blip on your radar so that one day, like my mom, I can go, well, just not that much happened, right? So that's what we're here for. And one of the big symptoms, symptoms, byproducts of perimenopause and menopause is rapid unaccounted for weight gain, right? So today I wanna to talk about weight loss and some of the things that we can control, some of the things we can do, some of the education we need around our hormones and how that interplays with weight loss, okay? I'm gonna have a lot of practical tips, but I really want you to understand your hormones first. Right? It turns out that the hormones play a really big role in weight loss, except that when we were younger, our hormones were much more resilient. And when we powered through the shitty workouts and we powered through the 500 calorie diets, we still got results. And this has set us up for some really crazy expectations as we get older. Now we think, oh, we wanna lose some weight, let's just start running. Or we can live on cottage cheese and peaches. Do you remember that? My mom used to do that, gross. And then we'll get the sustainable weight loss. Not gonna happen. You see, it, that's, that's not how it works. So we're gonna talk about that today. Um, we're gonna talk about what your hormones are supposed to be doing. Then some of the ways that we kind of screwed them up and damaged our hormones along the way to 40 something, right? how the hormones are fighting back now and demanding to be respected, because yeah, they are demanding to be respected. We, we really should have been respecting them for the last 30 plus years, but now they're saying, yeah, you're gonna pay attention to us, right? You will either pay attention to us in your 20s or we will 
demand that you pay attention to us in your 40s and 50s. Pass it on to your kids, right? <laughs> and then we're going to discover the really practical tips. We're going to talk about the really practical tips to losing weight, like starting today, starting the rest of today, starting from here on out, right? And then as you have questions, be sure you drop them in the comments. I will answer them as we go along. I'll hit do not disturb and it still rings through. Anyway, um, I'll stay on as long as people have questions. If you're catching the replay, put your questions in the comments and I will circle back later today to catch them all. Okay? Okay. Up first, hormone cycle. How is the 28-day hormone cycle supposed to work? First up, anyone else grow up thinking that that 28 days was like some mythical unicorn? Like until I was on birth control, my period could have been 22 days. It could have been 37 days, right? It was just like, this is crazy. So let's start with a little cycle education, right? Because I really feel like fifth grade did us a big disservice. So day one of your hormone cycle is your period. If you are postmenopausal, we can work with that. Okay, we can work with it because you still have hormones. And if we support and lean into the cycle and how it works, life feels better. Okay, so for post meno gals, you um, basically say, if you have no other like PMS type symptoms, you basically say, okay, today's day one and you mark on your calendar just like everybody else. Okay, so day one is the first day of your period. Testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone are all at their lowest parts, at their lowest throughout the whole month, right? Right after your period starts. And then estrogen starts to rise, peaking between days eight and 14. And then days 12 to 15, 16, right? It's a flow. That's when ovulation occurs. That's when testosterone speaks, peaks, testosterone peaks, right? Now, we don't have as much testosterone or, um, as men do as can, um, in relation to estrogen and progesterone, but we do have testosterone. That boosts the frisky factor, right? And that peaks right there as ovulation, survival of the species, right? Right after ovulation, testosterone and estrogen tank, gone. And progesterone starts to rise. Progesterone is kind of that feel-good hormone. Life is good, right? And then it tanks to about day 21. So that again, right as we lead into our period, all three of the major hormones are dipping down at their lowest. And then we start your period again. Okay, that's how the cycle works with predictability every 28 days, unless you've damaged it or screwed it up. So keeping that in mind, that means that hormonally and biologically, you are a very different person this week than you were last week. And you're very different this week than you will be next week. Maybe you've heard me talk about the four superwomen of our cycle. Frisky Fiona, Shira Sherry, Laid Back Leona, and Yoga Yavan. Right? That's what I'm talking about. We are very different women throughout the month. And because we are so different every single week, it stands to reason then that we're going to lose weight differently every week. It's going to change right? But it's not random. It's not random. Okay. And that's what we're talking about today. That the cycle changes are not random. They're predictable. And when we lean into that predictability, we can start using our cycle. Now, in case you haven't heard, women are not small men. And ask any wife, we can't lose weight like men do. Never go on a diet with your spouse your male spouse, don't do it. Quick side note, I really want you to think about this as we go along. Men have a 24 hour hormonal cycle, the circadian rhythm, right? They wake up in the morning with their morning wood and guess what is at its highest? I mean, aside from their wood. Testosterone is at its highest around 6 a.m. every day, kind of as the sun comes up, it all works together like that on a daily basis for men. And then as they go through the day, 6 a.m. it's high, it tanks all the way through the day. That's not to say the wood doesn't work at 9 p.m. 
but it works a lot better at 6 a.m., right? Nature says it's gonna work better at 6 a.m. It'll still work at 9 p.m. It's still gonna be okay, but the testosterone's a lot lower, okay? Now let's take this a couple steps further. Men who work out at 3 a.m., not 6 a.m., 3 a.m., right? They generally have a less productive workout, not an unproductive, a less productive workout than those at 6 a.m. or at noon, right? Okay, but that's not to say they won't make gains. It's just the gains are gonna be a bigger at 6 a.m., okay? Now just tuck this away, okay? Don't start saying, well, that's not how it works for me. Duh, you're a woman. Women have a 28-day cycle, the infraradian cycle, compared to men's 24-hour cycle. Turns out um, that when estrogen is high in women, muscle gains are easy. It's like men's 6 a.m. So like day, day eight of our cycle is kind of like 6 a.m. for a man's cycle. And around day 14, you know, around a man's noon, when testosterone and estrogen are both pretty high, progesterone starting to raise, it's like a noon workout, okay? And just like 3 a.m., day 26 of our cycle, is for ineffective workouts. Ineffective workouts happen at day 26. Now, are you hearing this? Are you seeing this? Just like a man is not going to get his best at 3 a.m., women are not going to be their best on day 26 of their cycle. That's not how the hormones are laid out. Tip number one, quit working out on day 26. Quit working out at 3 a.m. Quit working out on day 26, not cool, okay? Now that you know that estrogen and progesterone build muscle differently, are you open to the idea, the fact that estrogen and progesterone use different fuel differently? They use fuel differently. They use different fuels differently. Okay? So, while well, estrogen is on the rise, day two to around 14, your body preferentially burns carbs over fat. I'm not saying to only eat carbs here, okay? Don't hear that. What I'm saying is that in a high carb situation, you just ate all the birthday cake, your body will preferentially use those birthday cake carbs before it, use, before it burns stored fat. Before it burns stored fat, it's gonna use the birthday cake because it prefers carbs. Estrogen prefers carbs when estrogen is in charge, right? So in an, in an ideal fat loss circumstance, when estrogen is high, you will carb cycle to encourage the burning of excess fat stores, okay? So if you're trying to lose weight, you don't wanna go carbless because your body is very smart, very adaptable, and does not want to starve to death. So if you try for 14 days to drop all the carbs out of your diet, your body will go, oh shiz, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a famine, right? So while it will burn fat high for a while, it's gonna quickly learn and readjust and readjust and readjust as you go through the month. So you want a carb cycle. I've talked about carb cycling in some other webinars and on my podcast, please go there to listen to the, the details about that, okay? Now, once, once estrogen is high and it starts to tank, progesterone takes over. Progesterone is in the lead. Um, progesterone preferentially burns fat. This does not mean eat more fat. It means to burn stored fat, like the stuff hanging off your hips, right? You need to lean in to a modified fast two times during your progesterone phase. Your progesterone phase is two, to two weeks long. One day each week, you will do a modified fast. I have also talked about this. Make sure you check out that podcast and that webinar, right? Big, big, do not fast, do a water only fast. That will do more harm than good. You need to fast like a woman is designed to fast, 
okay? Intermittent fasting, also not what I'm talking about. Intermittent fasting has been shown to be extremely effective for men, but not for women, not in the long term, okay? So make sure, I'll come back to that, Mary. Make sure that you are, get a hold of that modified fasting. Get a hold of me, read the webinars, right? Okay, now, when we were younger, before we went on our first diet, this was the ideal. This is how it worked. For two weeks, your body liked carbs. For two weeks, your body liked progesterone. If you didn't have any extra stored fat, that, that was the preferred fuel source, right? But then we cut calories to some crazy arbitrary number and we lost weight. Yay! But it came at some kind of high price. You got some kind of pissed off hormones. Maybe it was like your first week of high school and you wanted to lose some weight and you kind of pissed your hormones off. And then some months or years later, you went on another diet or another exercise program and you didn't really pay attention to your hormones and you lost weight, but you pissed your hormones off again. Like maybe around prom time, right? And then maybe when you got married, you did it again. Now a few things have been happening over this time. You have disrupted the ideal and your hormones are learning from that and not falling for your low carb trickery as quickly as they did that first time. And after each low calorie time or, you know, famine as the body might call it, your body learns to store excess to live off for the next famine. So instead of you lost some weight, but now your body learned it has to store excess right now because you might go through another famine. And the famines, diets, start to dysregulate your hormones. Can't think of an idea? How about with anorexia, you get amenorrhea. You cut your calories too far, your period stops. That's not good, right? You've messed with your hormones. I don't want you to be confused. When you mess with one hormone, you mess with the entire endocrine system. It's a seven gland system. You mess with your thyroid, you mess with your pituitary, you mess with your hypothalamus, right? You're not just messing with one thing. You mess with your insulin, you're gonna mess with your estrogen. That's just how it works, okay? But when we were young, we didn't know this. We were not well educated about our hormones. I mean, until you wanted or you didn't want babies, you didn't, it really didn't matter, right? That's all hormones were good for, that's what I thought. Now babies and pregnancies throw your hormones into a different state of unalignment, but that's a topic for another day, okay? So now we find ourselves post 40 and this weird hormone disruption starts messing with our hormones and there's hot flashes and mood swings and low libido and shitty sleep and brain fog and weight gain that will not stop even though you've done nothing different. You're not eating different, you're not moving different. And in a moment of despair, we go on another diet or we hit the gym. Maybe we lose a few pounds and we really focus and clean up our diet or, or we walk and then we plateau. So we cut calories or we walk more, but instead of losing weight, our very adaptable body remembers that this is a famine and goes into straight up storage mode. Everything you eat is gonna be stored now. You're in a famine. You have trained your body phenomenally over the last 40 years. But because we didn't know this, we cut more calories or we start running. And if we're lucky, we stall out. If we're not so lucky, we gain weight. And finally we say, chuck this, and we just go buy bigger pants. And we might not be real happy about it. But what if we were to lean in to how our hormones were really designed? You know, act like a woman and read the directions. Quit pretending that we're small men and that our hormones are on a 24 hour cycle. Lean into the 28 days. Yeah, it's different. It's different. That's not how we were trained. Every day is just repeat and rinse of the day before. Now, remember, if you don't have a period, it's not a problem. Uh, one of the things I coach my Use Your Cycle clients 
through that are postmenopause is we talk about do they have any stereotypical um, like PMS still hanging on, right? Like go through a week of constipation or cramping or bad sleep or something like that. If not, literally you pick a day and you start training your hormones until you can lean into them, okay? If you still have a period, day one is the first day of your period. And then for the next 14 days, you're doing estrogen based things. And then you mark your calendar. So on day 15, you switch and make sure you mark your calendar again for day 29, which was then also day one, right? That's how we start using your cycle. And then it takes about four months. I've really found using, um, using the use your cycle method with my clients that it's about four months and then things are just like clockwork, right? Clockwork, clockwork, clockwork. All right, back to the lean. Lean into the 28 days. Estrogen phase starts day one of your period. This means we will burn more stored fat. We'll burn more of the stuff hanging off our hips by carb cycling, not carb cutting. Not carb cutting, not calorie cutting, not carb cutting, carb cycling. You want to be methodical about this while you're learning this new skill. This is a skill. It's not, it doesn't just happen, right? Any woman or anyone that carb cycles that tells you, oh, you just, you just kind of sort of, no, you do not wing it. Not when you're learning it. Okay. But within four months, it's really going to start becoming second nature. So for four months, four months. That's on the long side. You really have to to think about this, okay? Think about it, plan it, track it, figure it out, okay? Um, And then for exercisers, yeah, the estrogen phase is when you build muscle. It's your 6 a.m., okay? This is when you lift heavy and you run fast. And then you mark your calendars. Day 15, you switch, you switch. It happens, ladies. It's just going to switch. Progesterone takes over, okay? You're going to quit carb cycling, and you plan for a modified fast each of the next two weeks. One day, each of two weeks, right? You schedule it because, again, it's not like you just wake up one day and decide you're not eating. There's planning to be done the day before. There's things to do the day after, and there's definitely things to plan for the day of, okay? Exercisers, back off, right? You are headed into your 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. range, right? Take a yoga class and schedule your massage. Seriously, it's like 3 a.m. for the men. Don't go to the gym. The men aren't there. Why should you be? Right? This is where we don't compare to men. Oh, I go to the gym every day at 6 a.m. Cool, you're a guy. That's what your hormones support. It's day 26. I go to only go to the gym during 6 a.m. as well. That's days 8. 15, right? Quit going to the gym. All right. Now I've explained the estrogen and progesterone. I've explained that, um, how to do your exercises and how to do your, um, carb cycling and your fasting in another webinar. I've got a couple different ones that focus on those things. Check out the YouTube channel, right? What I really want you to latch on today is the cycle. The cycle is predictable. It is supportive and it changes every week. It is predictable and you can use it. You just have to learn what the cycle is, right? This is a cycle that leans into a time to grow and a time to rest. It builds both of those things in, okay? And when you use it, when you support it from where it is at, it will work for you. It will work for you. Weight loss will become easier. Libido will increase. Your concentration will be better and your moods are gonna level out. Think about this. Men have to exercise most days of the month, all month long, to continue to make gains, right? Women have to exercise for two weeks, two weeks. I'm not saying like, don't exercise at all. I mean, maybe week three. Yeah, 3 a.m. I am. That's what I'm saying, right? Women have to exercise for two weeks hard. And then if they're crazy enough to push through those two weeks that are actually hard, then you deserve the losses that you're going to get. Progesterone eats up muscle. And if you're going to do things that continue to eat up muscle, you're going to get losses. Why are you doing it? Your body says, take a freaking break. Sit down. You might be growing a baby. Sit your butt down. Quit going to the gym for two weeks. Chill. 
get a dang massage. That's the cycle. I know it's completely counterintuitive from what we grew up knowing. This is why it's like you weigh yourself on Monday and it's okay. And then you lose a little bit of weight. And then the next week you're up a little. And the next week you're up a little. And then you drop. Because you didn't lean into your cycle. You compare day one to day one. Day eight to day eight. Day 15 to day 15. Don't compare day one to day 14. That's dumb. Okay? Lean into the preferred fuel sources in order to run on premium fuel all month long, you actually gotta change the fuel. It's kinda like changing the fuel in like old time cars, right? Change the fuel in the summer and the winter. But think about it this way. If you were, uh, you know, running on a cash deficit this week and you bought the cheap stuff and it gums up your engine and then next week when you got paid, you go buy the premium stuff. You don't immediately jump to premium performance because your engine got all gummed up, so the first tank of premium gas is just cleaning out last week's gas, right? Try to run on premium all the time. So just because carbs are the premium fuel this two weeks, fat is the premium fuel here. But if you try to run on fat all month long, you're gonna gum your engine up and back yourself, you're gonna cause problems for two weeks, right? Okay, now I know right now you're going, Oh my God, this is so hard. I don't even understand. Actually, it's just different. And because we learned, all we learned, all we learned was cut the calories, cut the calories, cut the calories. Yeah, the first couple of months are gonna seem hard because they're different and you're learning a new skill. And then you get into the rhythm of two weeks by two weeks by two weeks and you start to welcome the shifts. Your body craves the fast, your body craves the recovery, and then it craves the work again. And I hear you, four months for results, Denise. I didn't say that. What I said is it's gonna take you four months to learn it. You're gonna start getting results within a month. But either way, the time is gonna pass. So you can continue this whole cut calorie, cut calorie, cut calorie thing, or you can spend four months trying something new because you already know what cut calories is gonna get you. You still got it hanging off your butt. You know what it's gonna get you, right? Okay, I'm going to give you five or six solid tips here in just a second, but I wanna talk to you about the pick your own challenge, okay? It's gonna start March 3rd. Do you remember reading those books when you were a kid, right? Where you would read several pages, you'd just get into the book and then you got to make the decision, will Nancy call Ned? Go to page three. Or will she wait for Jane to send him a note? Go to page 75, right? Do you remember those? I loved those books. Those were my favorite, right? Well, that is what this Pick Your Own Challenge is going to be about. That's what it's about, right? I could, I could say, hey, let's do a walking challenge. But if you're not really into walking, you've got a bum knee or maybe it's 10 below out where you're at, this challenge wouldn't be for you and you're gonna be like, no, I'm not gonna do that. Or I could do a veggies first challenge. But if veggies are not your thing, you're probably gonna say, no thanks, I'm not doing that challenge. So we have the pick your own challenge. It's got several ends, several means to the ends, right? Some of the biggest dial movers. You're gonna read, read the story and you're gonna pick your answer. Do you have time or don't you? Do you like salads or don't you? right? It's a series of questions, but it's designed so that you get to pick the outcome and get a challenge that's going to work for you in your life and be a big dial mover. So maybe it ends up being a fitness challenge for you. It's 10 days long. It's enough time to get you into the groove of it and start feeling into your cycle. Okay. We start on March 3rd. Um, I'm going to put the link in the comments when I'm done with this. So be sure you Check that out, get signed up for it. Um, included in that, we're gonna do a couple of kickoff live trainings. We're gonna do email support throughout the time. It's gonna be fun. I'm positive because I'm fun like that. <laughs> so, okay, so this is the pick your own challenge, biggest dial movers designed to fit right into your lifestyle. We start March 3rd, that is next Wednesday. Get signed up in the comments when this video is over. All right super implementable tips that you can start today. Doesn't matter what phase you're in, so don't even think about it. These are like the foundation, 
that you can do these things all month long to support your hormones so that when you start leaning in even harder to those estrogen and progesterone things, it's going to work even faster. Okay. First up, anybody got a guess? First up is to eat your protein or even just start tracking your protein. How much protein are you getting in a day? Are you getting anywhere near the 100 to 125 grams that is scientifically proven that menopause and perimenopause and postmenopause women need? 100 to 125 minimum. How close are you? Next, eat your vegetables. Every meal. Somewhere around a pound a day, eight cups of leafies or and four cups of like more dense vegetables like green beans or Brussels sprouts or whatever, right? Or start tracking it. How close are you getting to that? This is going to give you some clues as to why you're not getting any of the results. If you're getting 30 grams of protein and like zero vegetables, totally common. Start with a lot of people. Vegetables, yuck, no, right? If you're getting zero, this is a good indicator on why your hormones are messed up and why you're not getting results. Next, let's cut out some of the really inflammatory foods because we have become more sensitive to them. There's no way around this, right? A lot of times when a woman in her 40s gets to the chuck it and buy bigger pants stage, she's saying, I can't lose weight anyway. I'm going to have wine every night because I like it. I like chocolate. And since I'm not losing weight, chuck it. Chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, chuck it. Here's the deal. If you can come cut out some of the inflammatory foods that you're eating, it's going to make a big difference. Things like milk, bread, grains, pastries, sugar. Yes, you know sugar is inflammatory. It messes with your insulin. Mess with one hormone. Mess with the whole system. Can you give up even one serving a day? Maybe instead of that... Um, sugar syrup in your coffee. Maybe instead of having a donut with your coffee, you just have the coffee, right? Like start somewhere. Give up one serving a day, right? What can you give up? Maybe you need to give up two. Hmm? Drink your water. I know these sound basic and maybe they are, but if you're not doing them, they're not basic enough, right? If they're not, if you're not doing them, then start. It's somewhere to start for you, right? Mayo Clinic says half your body weight in ounces of water every day. As a minimum, I say shoot for 90 to 100 or more a day. Okay, you gotta flush, you gotta, you gotta support your liver. Your liver has been doing right by you for 40 plus years. You have got to like quit clogging it up every chance you get, okay? If you are an exerciser, here is your over 40 tips as an exerciser. Shorten those workouts to 30 minutes or less. 30 minutes max, ladies. If you want to make, um, it, not if, you want to make your workouts heavy and fast, do not putz around with steady state cardio. Steady state weightlifting, knock it off. This raises your cortisol more than the good it does. Okay? So you want to lift intensely or you don't want to lift at all. Okay? That, that in between that, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to walk for an hour because it burns more calories. Calories don't matter anymore. Okay, they matter a little, but hormones matter way more. Okay? Next, add in a nice stroll. Could be 10 minutes, could be an hour. Could This one could be any. A stroll. A stroll is not 3.5 miles an hour. A stroll is not 3.8 miles an hour. It is 3 miles an hour. That's the number. Even 2.8, you can go less but not higher. It's not, let me go just a little bit faster. Let me pump my arms. Let me lift, um, carry weights while I go. Nope. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy the uh, stress reduction of it. It's just a stroll. It's one of the biggest things you could do. And if you're in Minnesota and you've got this gorgeous nearly 40 degree day, go for a stroll, not a walk. Finally, Hugest, biggest, biggest, biggest tips. Biggest tip. Tip. Tip number one. Number seven, one. One. Start. The time is going to pass regardless of if you take just a very little start or if you take a running leap. The time is going to pass. So, start. 
if you don't know where to start, might I recommend the Pick Your Own Challenge that starts on March 3rd. You can get signed up for it today. Start getting some tips and tricks right into your email box right away. Um, I've got the guided questions that you're going to get and you're gonna end up in one of the top dial movers that's really going to help you with the weight loss journey after 40, okay? Now, if you've got questions, I'm coming back up to somebody had a question about HRT. I'm gonna answer that. If you are catching the, the replay, put your questions there. I'll circle back later. Um, just wanna get signed up for the Pick Your Own Challenge. I'm gonna drop the, the link in the comments in a little bit. Um, but let me just go back here in the comments. Does HRT interfere with this? Mary, Mary G. Um, it could. It might be setting, um, I, I would wanna talk to you a little bit more about what kind of HRT are you on? Um, what kind of doses are you on? How long have you been on it? And we can work with that and lean into the cycle that you have created, okay? So yes, it's going to, I don't wanna use the word interfere it's going to impact it. It's not gonna interfere, it's gonna impact it. That doesn't mean you cannot continue to use your cycle and lean into the cycle that we were gifted, okay? And then Danica. So you're gonna start on something today, Danica? What are you gonna start with? So personally, you know, personally, I have fallen into this habit of um, adding a lot of cream to my coffee. I really enjoy cream in my coffee. My skin does not, and I get bloated as I'll get out with it. So that is my personal, I'm going to finish up the, the pint of cream. I've only got about that much left, so about two days worth of cream. I'm gonna finish that up and, and be done with that. If you wanna drop in yours, I love it, Danica. Track it, track it. I got a water thing. I wanna Let me show you my water thing, guys. So I learned this from a friend. Every day I track my water, every glass of water is a different color, right? Does a couple things. One, then you're not going, um, I have, was that the beginning of four or the end of four, right? Track your water, track it, I love it. Okay. Are you getting results, Mary? Are you feeling better? Are you getting the results that you went on to HRT for? That would be my question. And does it cycle at all? Is it 200 milligrams straight up all month long or no? Those would be more questions I would have. Um, so that is my goal. Also, I was like, what has changed in the last year? What's going on with me? Oh yeah, I went from walking three to five miles a day to, boy, it's cold out. And we walk a three quarters of a mile. So also focusing more on my walking. Um, those are some of the things I am working for. If you're looking for those other webinars that I referenced, my YouTube channel is Menopause Meals and Movement. I have got those webinars there. Um, so that's where you can catch them. If you scroll back far enough into the Menopause Project group, you will catch the replays of most of them. Um, that's another way to get them. And if you aren't catching my podcast, Literally, they're eight to 15 minutes long. I put them out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, I talk about using your cycle on Thursdays and I talk less specifically about using your cycle, but like yesterday I talked about protein and vegetables pretty extensively. So that's called Menno Minis. You can catch it on Spotify, Apple, anywhere that podcasts are found. <laughs> Mostly, I would really love for you to pick your own challenge. I'd love for you to join the group. I think I double checked the link. Somebody was having problems this morning and there's my tech issues. If you can't catch it, be sure you shoot me a message um, and I will get back to you. I'm glad you enjoyed, Mary. Um, if I can message you, if that's cool, I will message you outside of here. Um, okay. Anything else I can answer for anybody right now? If you think of anything later this afternoon or when you don't have your fork in your mouth, I assume, oh, I assume some of you are eating lunch, uh, pop it in the thing, send me a message, whatever, and I will circle back after I go get me some lunch. Have a fantastic afternoon, ladies.